Air ReZero analysis. What is going on? The white whale subjugation is done. And we are now going into subjugating the witch's cult. What we see before us is the other half of the Kararage private army, right? The Hoshin private army. I forgot the exact name. Julius is there and they were basically holding up a row so no one's going to fuck our uh, whale run up. And man, I thought that like things would be pretty bad. I thought that Subaru would fuck up entirely. Things have been going a little bit too well, right? Krush is like giving us our heartfelt thanks. Wilhelm is on his knees saying like, you're my savior. Not really, but you know what I mean. And now Yuli shows up and I'm like, ooh, maybe it's time for everything to start falling off. And you can kind of see the classic Natsuki Subaru, right? The one that is so envious of other people's powers and looks and charms and what they have. Other and how angry he gets and how prideful, how ego gets hurt whenever he sees Yulius. But I, this isn't Yulius, guys. This is Yuli. I don't know where the fuck this roleplay came from, but the whole logic of why he is a Yuli is he's a knight, an imperial knight has chivalry. He cannot be, he cannot afford to be seen with like a mercenary. So therefore, he's Yuli right now. Yulius is interesting because he is an Imperial Knight of, you know, Kingdom of Lugunica. Yet, he's somehow like an attendant or Anastasia's knight, you know? Why? Is there some ties? Is he from Kararagi? I'm not sure what Anastasia's and Yulius' past is, but that's very interesting. I'm still wondering where the new checkpoint is. It'd be really nice if the checkpoint is literally right here as soon as we beat the whale. But now, we're going to explain like how we know the cult members are attacking. And, you know, for them to trust us. And I think the excuse that we gave them was like, what was the actual excuse? Something about how... Subaru, how do you know the cult members were attacking? Well, the white whale was around here. And then, of course, because they gained more trust with Subaru leading this white whale subjugation thing, they're more lenient to believe. And we're like, yeah, it's, they're just in the forest. Don't worry. Everything is going to fucking work out. Right? So... This Yulian Subaru moment, look at his face, man. <laughs> Yulian Subaru moment, it's pretty funny. But the Imperial Knights, they've had a whole long-standing desire of killing the White Whale. It's been a thing for a long time, and is that because of the previous sword saint being killed by the White Whale? Most likely, right? If you look at the Reinhardt Theresia backstories, when she was being appointed as a new sword saint, it was the whole Imperial Knights at there, right? So I think that the Sword Saint might be like, what? The strongest sword user ever amongst the Imperial Knights? I'm not too sure, but maybe that stems with that vengeance as well. And then from the bottom of his heart, Julius says, thank you, right? I owe you my thanks just like how Wilhelm did. And Natsuki Subaru, bro, he's like, Bro, I hate you. I hate your guts. But you're saying thank you, and I feel weird about myself. I don't know how to feel, so I'm gonna fucking lash out. Patrash's side eye is diabolical the entire time. I wonder if Patrash literally has the same feelings that Subaru does. You know? Like, Subaru fucking, what's it called? He's very prideful. Patrash is very prideful. So do you think that Patrash understands Subaru deeply? And the side eye is coming from that source of pride. Who really knows? Wrong translation. Lugunica is a kingdom. So these are actually royal knights. So you're really going to contest these sweaty subs of the imperial knights versus the royal knights right now, Judah. You are right now here upset that the imperial knight is a false name. Imperial should be royal instead. I, I, I don't know what the source material says, but... I am going to go with the subs here because amongst all the subs in the high seas, these are one of the sweatiest for V0. So I'm still going to go with Imperial Knights. You can find some other source to prove me wrong if that's the case. And look at this, bro. He gets so mad. He's like, oh, man, I don't know how to feel about myself. You say thank you, but I hate you. And, you know, we're both apologizing. But at the end of the day, he still says, you know, I fucking hate you from the bottom of my heart. It's just bros being bros, right? Bros being bros, and even though, you know, we said some hateful shit, I think that Yuli and us, there could be a beautiful friendship very soon. This scene was very sad. Amelia, just in the darkness, in the shadows like this, it's never a good look, right? Seems like Amelia's very busy preparing for whatever she's doing regarding the royal selections. Looks like she has to do a lot of studying, a lot of paperwork. I have no clue. And Roswell, absent as usual. 
So the plan, it seems like, is to use Subaru's Miasma to draw out the cult members. And another moment. Another moment where the cult members bow out of respect. Because the stench of the witch is just so thick. And a lot of people are saying that the Miasma has nothing to do with how Subaru can see the Unseen Hand. The Miasma has nothing to do with how strong an authority is. And again, it's just like so many people are capping in these comment sections. Most motherfuckers say that they know what they're talking about from the light novels. And then the next comment is another light novel reader. Like proving them wrong with an actual passage out of the fucking light novel. There's so much misdirections and misunderstandings and so many monkeys screeching different opinions. I don't even know what the fuck I'm supposed to think anymore. But my always intuition was they respect Subaru because he's so clad in the love of the witch, so strong. And the reason that he could see the unseen hand is because he has stronger miasma compared to before. I don't know, it just makes sense to me watching the anime. Maybe I'm wrong, but how the fuck could you blame me as an anime only at this point? And then, we get brought to Betrugus Romani Conti. He had a lot of different, uh, <laughs> what's the word? Pronunciation of the word. This is a very sloppy, very spitty, like this. And his all mannerism is so funny as usual, right? So what's the important dialogue here? Well, we meet for the first time, and he asks us, are we pride, right? The love, the love, the love. And what am I supposed to do now, right? You wouldn't happen to be pride again. Pride mentioned because of these six archbishops, remember, even though there's seven deadly sins, there's only six sins of archbishop. Why would that be the case? I don't know. One sin is missing. We know that pride and sloth is definitely one of them. So what can we infer from here? Well, the lore of Satala is she consumed the other six witches and ravaged the earth. So maybe Envy, because Satala is the Witch of Envy, there is no Archbishop of Envy for whatever reason, because Satala consumed all six, and the six Archbishop that exist are supposed to be for those six sins? I don't know, I'm just trying to theorize and guess. We haven't really met any other Archbishop yet. The only Archbishops mentioned are Sloth, which we see right now, and this position of pride, which is empty, which is so curious that... A position called pride is empty. Pride, something that Subaru is so common with. I'm not saying pride is something specific or unique to Subaru, but it is a reoccurring theme over and over since the beginning of ReZero. He himself has claimed pride as a characteristic from an actual dialogue subtitle. So I'm like, I don't know. Are we supposed to be pride? Maybe we were supposed to be pride a long time ago, but due to the event of... You know, the story unfolding, we never became Pride. There is different what-if routes, right? What if Subaru became Pride? What if Subaru became different, you know, sins? I think that's more of, like, him suc succumbing to those sins. For example, like, what's it called? The moment that Subaru said, let's run away with Rem. If that shit actually did happen, I think people are saying that is, like, the what-if sloth route. Because that's, like, in action. You're running away from your problem. You're not doing anything about it. Therefore, you're succumbing to your sloth sin. I don't know. But, hey, pride is... Pride is gone. Better the goose and Cruz have same color hair. Relatives? You know what? Yes? <laughs> How did you know? That's Bet... That's, that's Cruz's brother. You're Holy fuck. You're right. But pride position. Empty. I just wish the Subaru would say that, yes, I am pride. And, like, go to the cult. But... Now that we know that we need the gospel, that's not possible, right? Look at these faces, man. You have received the gospel, haven't you? No, we haven't. And rumors say, right? Rumors say that anyone with the potential to join the cult, not archbishops, we're talking about regular foot soldiers, any dudes with the pointy hat, they're given the gospel? That's what the anime is seemingly telling us based on the passage later on. And the subtitles for that is later on. When they're tied, I think they're talking about the gospel specifically, but I thought the gospel was specific for the archbishops. Here, Betrugus actually reads through his gospel and says something very interesting. My gospel has no account of you. Meaning, Betrugus wanted to look in his gospel to see if there's a mention of Subaru and him potentially being pride. 
Maybe. What does that mean? The gospel has already... It's, it's like a full instruction set of like, these are the different cult members. Because he looked at the gospel as some sort of proof checking to see if Subaru is pride or Subaru has gotten the gospel, right? So clearly there is some sort of narrative, some sort of script in the gospel that these dudes are reading out. I'm not really sure what's going on beyond that, but this dialogue is very interesting of how he referred to the, you know, gospel and then confirmed that Subaru is not part of the plan. I don't know. So did someone like write in the gospel like this is everything that's going to happen leading up to the day of the ordeal and, you know, as and everyone is reading this as like a fucking law and making sure everything is going towards the scripts like that's what it seems like Better Goose is doing. We don't have a gospel. Then why did you appear here? What fortune are you here to deliver? Uh, nothing. And Super is like, oh yeah, the gospel. I, uh, use it as a coaster at home and now it's all wet and I'm trying it. <laughs> Authority slot, unseen hand. Yes, of course, he's going to get so mad. Because the gospel is like a sacred Bible, right? Like, you cannot disrespect the gospel like that. You literally use it as a coaster. That is a cardinal sin. You need to fucking be punished for that shit. And we see this unseen hands again, but remember, <laughs> we can see it. So it's not really that scary, bro. These are seen hands. And the whole strategy was buy time. Buy time for Mimi and everyone else to set up. Boom. They do breath attack to capture all the foot soldiers in the ruins. Wilhelm comes out of fucking nowhere and slap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mimi's actually had such a highlight reel, man. Mimi, this episode had such cute moments. And then... Oh, oh, oh. What does it say here? The time has come to learn which of us is worthy of her love. I think Subaru has all the love, right? Love is such a interesting word that the cult members use. There's a lot of different... And I think that love is an ever-changing theme. Love in this context is... Maybe the witch's stench is a quantifiable measure of seeing who is more preferred by Satala. The time has come to learn which of us is worthy of our love. Everyone is simping for Satala, remember. Every cult member is simping. Well, maybe not every, but Betrigus definitely is. And he's upset that Subaru, who seems to be not even aware of anything, has the most love on him. Right? I'll have someone else line to take you on. Comes Wilhelm out of nowhere, cuts him from behind. It's a very interesting line here. Where it's just like, Wilhelm, I'm sorry about making you do that. Like, I know you're a knight, you know, there's knight chivalry, and striking someone from behind has got to be so cowardly. But Wilhelm is like, fuck chivalry. <laughs> I don't care. I'll backstab a motherfucker. So I'm like, all right, Wilhelm. And then this part, Mimi and TV, just like looting them, <laughs> looting a corpse. Again, it's so cute and disturbing. It's this combination of cuteness and horrific acts that they're doing and the contrast the gap moe makes it hilarious tv finds the gospel and they don't know it's a gospel until we tell them and they're like oh no it's a gospel and tv throws it away they're like oh no we're cursed forever this is such a blasphemy subaru picks it up and reads it they don't even want to see the text because obviously they're superstitious gospel relates to the witch's cult of course they're not going to want to you know fucking watch that shit right and then boom we see the text here and Obviously, we can't read this shit. The only observation I can make is that the font is wonky here. Maybe this is intentional. Maybe it's not. Maybe this is old passage and, you know, a little bit of water got on the ink and that's why it's getting wonky like this. I have no idea. We don't have the language interpretation to be able to read it. Who knows what's going on, man? But if you basically you need gospel, it's a proof, right? If you want to be a member, especially a fucking archbishop, you need it. So Subaru wants to decipher it. I think that we should decipher. I think this is a pretty good idea to bring it home. But think about how suspicious this looks. Like a dude that is so stanky with the witch's miasma is now carrying a gospel in his back pocket. If some other archbishop showed up, could they not literally say, holy shit, yo, you're pride. You've got to be pride, right? Because Betrigus has the understanding, and I'm sure every arch other archbishop also understands that only pride position is empty. I'm sure they're all aware of what each other looks like, maybe, or maybe they hide in secret. 
And now if if he runs into a, another cult member, runs into someone important, bro, now they're going to be like, oh, shit, dude. Are you pride? You must be pride. Now we have an actual gospel to prove it, right? Made me cute as all hell coming out of the fucking <laughs> dead body corpse here. But yeah, also the fingers, right? So I thought the fingers were just random foot soldiers. But we know that Betrigus has more than just 10 foot soldiers. So I guess the fingers are more advanced foot soldiers. And based on the later half of the episode, it seems like when Betrigus dies, his powers are transferred to another finger. Or maybe everyone is just coming out one by one. That's why I think it's being transferred. It's a bit ambiguous, but until the show can actually confirm that later on, we don't really know just yet. Yes, <laughs> yes, Mimi. 10 minus 1 is 9, so 9 are... <laughs> Again, this episode is just... Half of it is just building suspense with Mimi having cute slice of life moments. Like, what the fuck? Yes. Pride was specifically mentioned to be an empty spot. No one knows what's going on, and they're all anticipating the next Pride candidate to approach. But the more I think about it, it's just like, is Subaru actually Pride? Maybe. And now, has the gospel been delivered? Let's think about that. They say a gospel just somehow shows up in front of you. There was no ever mention that, you know, a sacrifice must be made so that Subaru can get the gospel. You know what I mean? Like, for whatever reason, the events right now happening, we took down Better the Goose and a gospel has appeared in front of Subaru. Can you, can you say that it's been delivered? I don't know. I thought that there would be like, Seven separate gospel for seven separate archbishops, but if you if you really just dissect what's happening in front of us, it does seem like you know the gospel has been delivered to us. <laughs> yeah, and the Nokia flip phone mean the gospel? I don't know about that, man. There's no passage in the Nokia flip phone. It's not like this is omniscient reader's perspective where your your fucking smartphone has the entire fucking PDFs of the manga. You know, we don't have the gospel. But now we have the gospel, and can we say that it's been delivered to us? It's more like we took it from Betrigus, but... I don't know, maybe we're taking one step closer to becoming Archbishop of Pride. Who knows? Mimi says, hey, stop being paranoid. You know, you want that thing to be gone, boom. And the corpse goes away. And the rest of the episode now is just cute scenes. A sloth actually exists. I can't believe it took me a long time to realize that a sloth was killed by the unseen hand of sloth. Truly a slothful reaction. I was too shocked by everything going on. My guard was so up high. Everyone's laughing. Everyone's having cute moments. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Something bad's gonna fucking happen. And what happens? Out of nowhere! Unseen hand, baby! Boom! More cult members show up. I'm gonna assume that they are... Are these fingers? These are not fingers, right? These are just regular foot soldiers, and the actual beings that are part of the Ten are fingers, right? I doubt that all the fingers are just showing up like this, right? Or maybe I'm wrong. And then Subaru gets isolated. We have a new Betrigus Romani Conti. This, everyone talks the same. Everyone talks the fucking same. And sometimes, it's so interesting, like, their whole dialogue, right? Let's look at this. Nothing. The one who reciprocates love. The ordeal following the guidance of love. A replica of the original Betagrius. And remember, this is not a confirmation. We're just... Subaru's trying to guess about what's going on right now. Sniff, sniff. The love that hangs from you does not compare to that of a mere follower. The love in this context being the miasma. And then... It's equal that of a Sin Archbishop. Subaru has regressed so many times, and the witch's stance has gotten stronger each time, and later off, it does wane off. But because we've been dying so repeatedly, it's stacked up to the point where it's the level of a Sin Archbishop. And everyone simping is so mad, of course, right? Displeasing, dissatisfied. Dude, look at the amount of alliterations happening here. This dude came up with fucking six separate fucking <laughs> words to describe how unfair the situation is. But guess what? Love is unfair for whatever reason. Satala loves Subaru more than anyone else. And that... I don't know why. Why? Why does Satala go out of the way, her, her way, to give so much preferential treatment for this fucking neat, this 17-year-old neat, when there's so many other people that's devout fucking followers? 
Well, you know what they say, the more you try to attain someone's affection, the more that they're gonna be bored of you. So Subaru is playing hard to get? <laughs> no, 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 no. That shit only works after they fell in love. Why did Satala fall in love? That is still the biggest mystery, man. Maybe it's an undescribable love. Just like how Subaru just met Amelia and was so down bad. Right? Because I'm thinking from my perspective of this is a fucking loser piece of shit from in Japan. 17 years old, did nothing with his fucking life. Is so fucking cocky and arrogant. Right? That's who Subaru is until the growth and the realization. Why would Satala love that shit? Because he is so ridden in those sins. There is a huge theme of the sins. I'm thinking from a perspective of a reasonable grown man that can raise girls. But if we think about the show and the sins, he is someone so down on the sins that Satala saw him as a great candidate. Are we getting somewhere with this? The more I talk about it, the more this makes sense. Because until now, I was like, what the fuck does Satala see in Subaru? He's such a loser. But that's the whole point. That's the whole point. Is it not? The fact that he is so riddled in these sins that the story seems to revolve around. Maybe I'm going nowhere with this, but maybe I'm deluding myself to think that this makes sense. Maybe I'm coping right now. I don't know. But this guy, <laughs> he's the kind of wrong person. <laughs> Imagine. No, I mean, Subaru is doing an amazing job. If we're thinking about, you know, I'm keeping Emilia safe for the day of the ordeal or whatever. I don't know. I think he's doing a decent job. But that's that. there's a lot of logical inconsistencies with that too. About how Satala gave Subaru the powers because of his desires to save Emilia no matter what. And the fact that he was riddled in different sins that's compatible with the witch's miasma. I don't know. And how... He's keeping Amelia safe and fresh for the day of the ordeal to awaken the witch. But that one episode, Amelia was already dead and better you showed up. And he was like, oh my god, so diligent, you know? The first step of the ordeal is already done. And then she sh he shit on Amelia for, you know, already dying on the fucking first hurdle, which is just a pebble on the ground. I don't know. I don't know. Would I say that's also a requirement for an archbishop? For, well, an archbishop... I think that the requirements for an archbishop is, first of all, the miasma. Maybe it's not a requirement to become an archbishop. Maybe once you become an archbishop, the miasma is then given to you more. I'm not sure how that works, but there is definitely a theme of Betrugius and Sloth. If you, it, during the last analysis videos in episode 15 specifically, we go into in depth of how Betrugius acts, right? Of course, he just put in on a clown act, but if you really try to understand what he's doing, when the other cult members said, Ryusha, Dragon Carriage, and Betrugus is like, Ryusha, amazing, so diligent, so diligent, so fucking, what's it called? Um, it's the opposite of sloth, right? It's a virtue. And if you're virtuous, if you're doing the opposite of sloth, you're doing a good job, right? It's so diligent, it listens to the rules and whatnot. But as soon as the, the dragon was dead, now it's being slothful, and now he gets mad at it. So anytime there's like a reason for Betrugus to reason how it could be slothful, he gets mad and he needs to repent for the sins by showing love to the witch, right? He needs to say, we need to pay with love, love, love. And what does love mean in that context? I'm not sure. Maybe sacrificing yourself or working hard so that you can basically attain the day of the ordeal. Basically just trying as hard as you can to be virtuous to make sure that everything is going good some sort of sacrifice, but it seems like Betrugu specifically deals with sloth. He hates it when you're slothful. He gets mad when you're slothful. Then he says, repent for your sins and we need to be more virtuous. That's what I perceive the archbishops. And maybe this is unique and specific to, you know, Subaru. But, but, sorry, maybe this is specific to Betrugu, but maybe not specific to other archbishops. You know what I mean? Like, all of this shit makes sense for Betrugus, but maybe the next Archbishop we meet, they're nothing like that. I don't, I don't fucking know. But yeah, it's basically to work against the slothness. Of course they're going to commit sins. Like, think about Christianity, right? They're always trying to be good, but of course you're going to be sinners. And when you sin, you need to repent and try to be better, right? That sin right now is sloth. They want to not be slothful, to be as diligent as possible. But of course, you're going to commit the sin, but when you do that... Repent for forgiveness. You need to pay back with love. And that love can come in many different forms. 
Anyways, we're getting off topic. What are we doing right now? Subaru is, you know, tracked right now. I'm not even close to Pride, Cap. I've never gotten a free book even as a membership perk. <laughs> that girl is not going to understand your fucking joke. But I think that, bro, that you were supposed to be Pride. Let's think about it this way. Subaru was so prideful on Earth. Satala somehow... How does Satala know that? I don't fucking know. Maybe he was always destined to be pride, though. He was always destined to be pride, but due to his actions, it's, str it's straying away from it. It'd be very interesting to see if there's an actual pride candidate we never know, and everything is a red herring, and we think that it's Subaru right now, but... I don't know, but the whole theme of pride just keeps coming back and coming back, man. And the gospel, right? He doesn't have a gospel, he fucking loses it. Sorry, I think this is a she right now, right? They get so mad when they don't have a gospel. It's like they're fucking like a uh, fidget spinner. Here, a spirit shows out of nowhere. A lesser fire spirit shows up and scares the shit out of this cult member. Why? Do we now know that spirits are super effective against cult members? Is it specific to this cult member? I'm not completely sure. And we know that Subaru is great with spirits, right? So is this a lucky instance of a lucky fire spirit just helping us out? Was this set up by someone else entirely? I'm not sure. This is a really cool scene here where TV and Mimi show up with a, 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 a breath attack. The water falls down and this perspective, you can... You don't see the unseen hand. So this is the perspective from not Natsuki Subaru, but from everyone else that can't see the unseen hand. But because the water is falling down and because the unseen hand is still a physical object, right? You can see the water hitting it and you can actually kind of see it. Wilhelm sees that shit, cuts that shit. I refuse to believe that this is just blind luck. I think that it is the water that enabled the vision for a bit. Wilhelm cuts that shit, times it. Run across the fucking water, cuts him down. This scene here was so cool. This was so fucking cool, bro. He ran so fast. He literally was wa running on water. He was running on water and he cut him down so quick. All of Wilhelm's moments, bro, the action sequences, it's just a fucking delight. Now, what does it say here? My life is spilling out. My blood is running dry. My diligent pulse, diligent, a virtue that works against sloth. My life support. All right? It's stopping, disappearing. My brain trembles and he couldn't even say, you know, my dream uh, finished the sentence. So the first sloth we defeated was a double and this is a real one? No. We don't really know that. I still want to believe that Betrugus is the main sin archbishop. And the other fingers are simply receiving his powers after he dies one by one. Or maybe, truly, all of them are the fucking Sin Archbishop of Sloth. I'm not sure, but there's a hundred of followers, right? So these are the other foot soldiers, and then there's the ten fingers, which are the upper elite. And I think the upper elite somehow taps into the Sloth powers once Betragus is dead. Subaru here returns to his usual self of blaming himself. And it kind of makes sense because he is the one leading the subjugation of the witch's cult. He has encountered them before. And it's a little unfair to blame yourself for not knowing this. This is something no one could have known until now. But clearly due to his pride, right, his ego, a lot of people often just blame themselves irrationally to make them seem like they are the hero. And then he gets down on his luck, right? If I realized this sooner, I could have avoided this. While you might be right, you succumbing to your sins right now is the worst thing you can do. It's going to cloud your judgment. And Wilhelm shows up. Giga Chad says, Tatakai, bro. Fucking fight on. Wilhelm. Giga. Giga Will. I'm so glad that he's becoming like a mentor character for us. He's here to correct us. He's here to uplift us. He gives us guidance. His wisdom. His strength. Wilhelm being our bodyguard is something I wanted to see in the future. I know that like... Wilhelm is only helping us out with the mission right now because, you know, Krush said so. But I think that beyond this too, Wilhelm will also show favor to Subaru no matter what. Thanks to, the, you know, the, the acts that we've seen during the subjugation of the White Whale. Such a cool moment. I joked about how that Tatakai moment might be more impactful to Subaru than Rem saying, I love you, you're my hero, but hey, I'm just saying that shit to rile the people up. And here, this is very interesting. Where, of course, you know, Felix says, go make up with Yuli. But as we get closer to Rosal's mansion, Ram? What's, what is this? Is this Genjutsu? Ram's doing something with the blue flower. Everyone disappears. 
I thought that a messenger was sent to the Roswell's mansion to keep them not panicking when multiple factions show up, right? Of course, if, if a bunch of mercenaries and soldiers show up from different factions towards the mansion, it's going to seem a little scary. Like, what the fuck is going on? But maybe the messenger never made it. Maybe Ram did this shit to the messenger and just killed him off. I'm not sure, but that's where the episode leaves off, man. I think in terms of the most interesting shit, it's always with the cult members. It's always about what the purpose of the gospel is. Why Better Goose referred to the gospel and confirmed that there's no account of Subaru as if this gospel has some sort of checklist of, you know, things that should be in place. And that's pretty much it. I will see you on the next video.